Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and this is yet another video review. Today we'll be looking at the Sony G400. This is a 19 inch flat screen monitor. So let's now swing over and have a look at this monitor. And remember, these videos are unedited and these are only my opinions. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the Sony G400 19 inch monitor. Uh, this monitor, of course, has the digital multi-scan technology. It's a uh, 0.24 millimeter aperture grille. And the maximum resolution on this, which you can get it up to, is approximately uh, 1800 by 1440. Now, you can get it a little higher using a program called PowerStrip, but that's the recommended highest on this monitor and right now you're looking at a resolution of 1280 by 1024 at 100 Hertz now I got this to 100 Hertz again using power strip program uh, at it default at 1280 by 1024 is actually 90 Hertz but using the power strip program you can actually get a few more Hertz out of it and certainly 100 Hertz is much better than 90 uh, with eye strain, you want to go as high as you possibly can go. Let's have a look now at some of the buttons and such on the front of this monitor. You have a reset button here, which is quite handy when you are wanting to default everything, all your settings, at one button to reset and default all those settings. It's very handy to have. Some of the monitors do not have this. Um, a lot of the high-end, uh, high expensive 21-inch monitors, believe it or not, do not have a one-button reset to default all the settings. This here is actually an input uh, one and two. And what this means is that there's two plugins on the back of this monitor for, you can have two computers plugged into this monitor. So right now I have it on one, which is the main system and if I had it connected to another system it would you would display the second system this is kind of very handy where you don't have to get a splitter if you have two computers you could use one monitor maybe that other second computer is a server and you don't want to go out and buy another monitor just to have it on, on, you know, on and off very few times as the servers are so that's a, that's a very handy feature here now let's go to the menu here Sony has done an excellent job with the menu. It's a toggle switch. I'll try to go down here so you can see this. As you can see here, it's a toggle and it's very nice. Very handy and very, very easy to use. And let's go over some of the options that are included in this menu. You can see here you can go into the color, you can adjust the color temperature, you can, you can center it, and I'll show you here how easy this is. You just select the option you want, and you just use the toggle to go back and forward. It is the simplest and easiest menu display system I've ever used. And of course you have all kinds of options like convergence, geometry, you have actually a help feature as well, language selections, your size, and here you have a button called option. Now you can, within this you can degauss, you can adjust the uh, moray, and I find for the Sony a moray of 40 is actually quite good and you also have a neat feature here that can lock all your settings so if you kinda get everything set up the way you want it you can actually lock it such that when I go back only thing is visible and changeable now is into the go into the egg either exit or option and if you go back in the option you can turn this on and off again another uh, cool feature here that Sony has is uh, image restoration so after some time, if you feel like the image has degraded or you just want to restore the maximum quality of the image, then you can select it and if I can show you here, it does what it does and restores the image back 
to optimum quality. Now this is only selectable after around 30 minutes of this monitor being turned on. Uh, these Trinitron tubes take around 15 to 30 minutes to warm up. I recommend leaving them on during the day or the time you are around. If you're leaving for a half an hour or an hour, leave it on. Uh, don't turn it off. Let's now have a look at the back of this monitor. Oh, and before I do, I should mention that this monitor is TCO Emission Standards uh, 1999. And of course, here you have the power on and off button. Okay, so you're looking at the back of the monitor here. And this is the, uh, the power cable. And this is the cable input one for the main system. And up here, you can notice that on the right hand side there, that you can plug another computer into this as well. Now if we look at the profile, it's not bad. Uh, it's around the same profile as most 19 inch monitors. Uh, certainly not as short as some of the short depth monitors, but overall it's certainly very acceptable. And if we look at the front of this, of course it is perfectly flat. Something else I should note is that with the Trintron tubes you're going to get two horizontal lines, one at the top and one at the bottom. I'll just point those out. There's one right here which goes across horizontally. It's very very faint and there's also one approximately right here. These lines are very very faint and I am very very fussy about image quality and it does not bother me at all. So again if you are buying these monitors be very aware that there is a line horizontal across the top and across the bottom and even a lot of the Samsung's and a lot of the flat displays now are having these lines in them. So if this bothers you stay away from most of the flat tubes. And also whether it be this monitor or any other monitor it's very important to have a monitor tilted correctly. You, you kind of want it at a 15 degree angle uh, pointing up so if I could have a look here at the side, it's, it's not down, it's more, it's more a tilt of pushing the screen upwards. And what this does is it gives you a very fair position from your eyes to your screen. Uh, in normal cases you are a little higher than your monitor. So to um, compensate for that, you want to raise or increase or tilt up your monitor approximately f at least 15 degrees to get it at um, you know flat eye level, so you can actually get optimum viewing quality. And going back to quality on this monitor, it is the clearest by far that I've seen in any monitor I've owned. And I have owned a few monitors, I must say. Sony is by far the clearest in both graphics and text. So to sum up this video review I give this Sony G400 19 inch monitor a 9 out of 10. Uh, only reason not giving this monitor a 10 out of 10 is the price. Uh, these Sony's are not cheap and this will discourage most people unfortunately from purchasing a Sony monitor. However, if you do have an extra $100, uh, $150, depending on which model you get, um, certainly I would spend the money. Your eyes are your eyes. It's very important if you're staring at a monitor all day long to have something that is uh, high quality and crisp text and as well um, for a great graphics. Also, it depends on the graphics card you're using. If you're using uh, a GeForce 2 card, uh, which is very symptomatic of poor 2D quality. Uh, you should uh, maybe, it doesn't matter what kind of monitor you have because a GeForce 2 is certainly not going to help if you had a Sony because of the bad 2D. Uh, Matrox cards and the uh, ATI cards are certainly some of the best for 2D graphics. Uh, as well as the GeForce 3. Some of the GeForce 3's 
are excellent. The LeadTech GeForce 3, which I did test with the Sony, was well, just a tad below the ATI VE Radeon card with this Sony monitor. So, if you're getting a Sony, have a good 2D quality card to back it up. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and this has been another video review. Check back in four days, and I'll have a brand new video review for you then. And be sure to check out my website at www.3dgameman.com. Until then, take care.